Hi everyone, um, I believe I am recording and I will be continuing on the foundation. I actually went ahead and started it not knowing I wasn't recording so I actually have some graphics that are actually ahead of our discussion right now. So I, I wanted to kind of summarize that previously we talked about two-way uh, shear and then now we're going to be talking about one-way. And so to uh, talk about like the, the demand on, on this one to be consistent to our next discussion, if we are solving for VU, that's really just the area that's highlighted in green multiplied by the QU value of 6.1. Okay, that's going to be your demand, right? And your capacity is really going to be talking about what is the capacity of this plane right here in shear. And that's that. Okay. Now when we talk about, so that was two-way shear, now we talk about one-way shear. So one-way shear is very similar to what we did in beam, right? So we talked about how we have a beam, right? We draw the shear diagram that looks like that. So let me, the shear diagram for this beam looks like this, right? And a d distance away, at that point, we can assume, because that's where our crack occurs, that that is the VU that we designed for shear. Remember, bending moment would be right at the face, right? So that would be your MU. But VU, you can go ahead and reduce the load, right, and check it that way. Now, the question is, well, what if I just take the load up here, right? Can I take that load up here? Yeah, you can, right? But it wouldn't be optimized. And on a midterm, you'd be incorrect. On an FE exam, you'd be incorrect. On an essay exam, um, if it's multiple choice, it will be incorrect, right? And and so um, also on the FE exam too, if this comes up, so we would just be a d distance away, and that's that's a clear. Okay, with the one way shear, it, it's the same approach. Okay, you've got the column from the face of the column to that, you're a d distance away, and to kind of give you an idea, the one way shear is this is a shear plane. I mean two-way, sorry, because it's two ways. Here it's one way, which is this whole entire line. Okay, the demand VU is in green, right? Um, and also, if, if it was not a square, if it was rectangular, you would have a different either call it dimension or even if the foundation was different. If you had that, then you'd also want to check this region also. Okay, and this region. Right, and that would be your two different VUs, um, and also be giving you a different shear plane. Um, anyways, so we solve for the demand. For one way shear. And it's literally the area of the green, right? Um, times the 6.1 QA, uh, QU, which is 6.1. So VU is equal to the area of the green. The book doesn't really say it this way. Times um, uh, the QU, which is 6.1 kip. Kip foot squared. So let's find out what the area of the green is, okay? If we know that um, half of it is, uh, the full width is 9.6, half of it is 4.75, um, and then we know that the center, this is 19, no, sorry, 18 inches, right, for the width of the column. We know half of that is nine, right? We know that the D distance is 19 inches. So essentially the dimension that we're looking for is gonna be Um, 4.75 minus, uh, what is that, 28, right, so 4.5, and then we're going to do plus, sorry guys, I'm solving. We're left with 2.42. It's really 416. Let's just do it. Six, you know, 
feet. So what that means is that this is a 4.2.4166 multiplied by 6.1 is going to give you 14.74 kips. Or if we want to do it per foot, it really depends, right? We could do per foot, so it would just be every 12 feet because we calculate our distance per foot. It doesn't really, we do both ways, so let's just do it both ways. So I'm going to put VU for 12 foot. It essentially be this 14.74 kips divided by the, the whole width, which is 9.6, right? One point five three. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I'm getting one point five five, one point five three. Anyways, it's kip per foot. Well, that's kip. It, it's essentially the same value, and you'll see um, why. So here. Um, we know that VC for the entire thing is two lambda F prime C um, B D. Notice how previously it was B dot, right? It's no longer there. So um, and we, we know it's normally concrete, so we know that that's 1.0. So it's two times, one times. Remember, anything in the house is in PSI. I forgot what concrete strength we were, 4,000. 4,000, uh, B is going to be uh, the entire width, which is going to be 9.5 times 12, right? And D is going to be, uh, I think we said it was 19 inches, okay? And to do the uh, per 12 inch, we would actually do two, one, depending on which way you want to do it. I'm not going to... Um, so here it would be just 12 inches and 19. That would give you a per foot. We would get the same D over C. Just to prove a point, we'll do both. Four thousand times Okay, I got a really large value, um, which is 270. It's 3.9, so let's just put 74 kips. And then if it was just per foot, okay. So the D over C, we could do both, right? So and this is what I was trying to say is 14.74 divided by 274, or we say it's 1.53 divided by 28.8. You'll get the same D over C, but I should check. And I'm trying to look for the VU. And I think I was off by decimal here. Oh. See what we did here. That was incorrect. Sorry, guys. It's the area under the green, right? So it's 2.4 times 9.5 times this is the area, and this is QU. 
So 9.5. It's actually 140. It's 0 0.04, so let's just say 140 is fine. Kips, and then this will be 140. Sorry to do this, guys. Just realize because so what triggered me to kind of take a look to see what was going on is that I was only like five percent overstressed, so that seemed it was like a little off for me. So I was just like, okay, well, what's going on? So looking back at the numbers now, we're saying that this is 140, this is 14. Zero point five one. That looks more reasonable. And this is across the board uh, for the most part pretty true. If you got like a rectangular, uh, I mean not rectangular, but of a square kind of isolated footing, um, your one way shear uh, usually doesn't govern. So two way shear is usually what governs, which is this. Okay. Uh, so with that, we we say that PVC. Oh shoot. Duh. So this is actually. A little off because I'm supposed to put the fee factor in here, which I didn't. <sighs> Sorry, guys. And then we know that the fee is equal to 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Right. So we get a better number. See? So from 5%, that's why I do D over C because it tells me that I was, um, it kind of reminded me that I should probably take a look at something. And so I'm good now, which is 0.68. So that's a better design. Okay, and so um, in, in summary for the shear at least, so two-way shear. So let's say shear summary. That one uh, two-way. The D over C we said was zero point nine two. The one-way shear. D over C is equal to 0 0.68. All right, so that, that's that's it for shear, right? So we know that shear um, works. If it didn't work, what would happen? It just literally means that um, we just increase the thickness of the concrete, right? So this dimension gets increased. 24 doesn't work. And so, you know, 24 is probably a good starting point in general anyways. All right, so the next thing we're going to move into is the uh, uh, bending moment. Okay. So the bending moment is going to be from the face of the column. Okay. So I'm going to just maybe look at it this way. Is that the bending moment is from the face of the column. So it's going to be And usually for this, we, we uh, just do a per foot basis is would be, um, you know, just as good and it'd be a distributed load. So if I took a one foot strip like this, let's say that that's one foot. Uh, let's see what the uh, moment would be, right? So check it out. Moment. MU, it's literally going to be, right, I'll say this, it's based on column, okay, um, it's going to be that distance, so what are we, uh, it's going to be 9, 9, 6, Minus the nine inches, so we're at eight foot something. So nine point five. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. Eight point seven five. 
So wrong face. So you see that 8.75? We'll do 8.75 right here. And depending on how you want to see it, I'm just going to keep it simple, right? Just because I'm used to seeing things down. It really is upwards because of the soil. Um, and we're saying, we're saying that this is 6.1 kips per foot. And because we're uh, a foot segment, it's not kips per foot squared, it's kip per foot. So this is where I like to break it down. It's just regular statics, right? So uh, M U is equal to force, which is 6.1 times 8.75, right? That's your force. Time the distance would be half of 8.7. Um, 8.75 over 2 will be your moment, right? Because this is your resultant force. This is your distance D, which is the location at which the resultant force is being applied, right? And so hence your, your moment is being created. 6.1, 8.75. Times let's is two hundred and thirty three. Sorry, let me uh, do this one more time, guys. Make sure I got this one. I get two hundred and thirty-three uh, kip foot okay and i'm checking against uh what's in the book and it's um what do they do my number's not matching them so I'm trying to figure out what's going on Oh, pfft. that's why, guys. That's not 8.75 right here. Oh, that's why. Oh, pfft. It's half of that. That's where we're off, guys. <sighs> this is where I need you guys to be like, correct me when I'm like, <sighs> it's really 4.75 minus the 9 inches. which is going to give you four feet. Duh. Okay. Three point eight kip foot times nine point five times, so fifty five sixty. So this matches the the book in a sense. So the book actually the book example actually took um, the entire width, but I'm just doing a per foot. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answers. Is really what it comes down to, right? So forty eight point eight kip foot. So here it just becomes regular beam design, right? So let's do the cheaters way, right? Area of steel is equal to mu over 4d 
and it's 48.8 kip foot. Remember that unit on um, four, and then we said that the D was 19 inches, therefore area of steel is 4.8. Four times thirteen is what it needs. Okay, so uh, uh, it's zero point six four um, area steel. So if we're gonna do it per foot, right? Um, it'd be uh, like a number seven. So let's see. So the exact area of steel for number seven rebar is 0.6, and it's not enough. So we're going to go with number eight, which is 0.79. Um, and then maybe we can go like a number eight at like say 14 inch on center. You can go with the larger spacing, or we could go like a number um, number seven bar, but go with closer spacing, right? So you can vary it. In other words, right? Um, let's see what the book says. The book is actually they they've actually calculated the total number. They said number set 12 number sevens instead. Um, so 12 number sevens. Let's see how closely are to this stuff. So they're using 12 number sevens, which area steel is equal to 0 0.6, 12, 0 0.6, right? That equals a total steel of 77.2, sorry, two. Let's see how close R was because we said 0.64 uh, multiplied by 9.5 times, and we said um, we just need 9. So we're somewhat close. Um, if anything, they're over designing it. So if that's the case, let's just go ahead and just, if we were to solve it, okay, I'm not really going to go and do um, all the exact stuff, but you know, we would solve for A. And then we would just say VVMN is equal to um, 0 0.9 ASFY, right? D minus A over 2, right? And so that's, I would solve for that. And you know what? Let's just do it. We're already here, anyways. Um, ASFY 0 0.85. And let's just go with, um, I'm just going to go with number 8 at 12, just because I, that's what I want. 0 0.79, this is deviate a little from like the book, but it's going to give us essentially what we want anyways. I think we're saying 4 KSI. And B, we're doing 12 inch strips, right? One point one inch. Area still we said is zero point. I think we meant to say zero point seven nine, so sorry about that guys. It won't change it too much. Sixty. So what is that equal to? And obviously, we're providing more because MU uh, D over C, which is equal to MU over V MN, MU is equal to 48.8. 
So um, the MEO of radio is quite conservative here. So realistically, I'm just going to be like, provide number eight at probably a 14 inch on center will work. 16 inch probably work, but um, I'm just going to do that. So, so really, um, what, what else do we have to check? We also have to check for minimum reinforcement, right? And um, so minimum reinforcement is AS min. Is equal to three um, f prime c thousand f y, which is sixty thousand, and then it's b d. So b, we'll just do um, uh, the twelve inch width, and then d is equal to nineteen. Right, but not less than also the other AS mean. Two hundred over F Y D two hundred over um, B is gonna be a twelve inch width and we'll say nineteen. Okay. So RAS min, which we are pretty much using about 0.75-ish because we're going for 17 inch on center or whatever. Um, it's, it, it shouldn't come close, but we'll see. Actually, I take it back. 0 0.72, it's pretty good actually. Um, and then this one, 200. Times. 0 0.76. So maybe my original number eight at 12 inch on center, which is equal to area steel, a 0 0.79 is the way to go. Right. Um, yeah. So it looks like what it is. So uh, let's see how you would kind of show that. So if you were to just kind of shorthand the the answer, you would do something like this: is that um, number? You'll say it's a nine four foot six by nine foot six square with number eight at 12, All right? You do each way. Um, I guess the only trick into this is that because you have, um, actually you shouldn't do this. When you do at 12 each way, that's usually for like walls, but if you've got um, um, a footing because it's nine foot six, people might get confused on that. So we'll just actually show it, so 0 0.79. 9.5 times, um, which is 7.5. So we'll just say um, ten um, number eights. Each way. And what does each way mean? So let's draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten number eights. And then you'll also have another perpendicular one that goes this way. Okay. Um, and you'll have a column here, right at the center. And you'll actually have dowels that would come in and turn down. You would state that this is 24 inches deep. You don't have to call out the three inches on this detail because typically your drawings at the very front will tell you it's three inches, but it doesn't hurt to clarify people that don't want to read your documents. So three inches um, is what you would call out.
for the clear um, of the bottom, right? And so because we did that, the question is, is our D assumption correct? So we're taking a step forward, right? Is our D a, a, a correct? Because we said D was 19, okay? So if that's the case, let's check it, right? So the bottom foundation is this, right? This is the total thickness of our footing, which is 24 inches. We know that the clear is three inches. And so we know that from there, we have a number eight bar, right? So often. Now the, the trick is that we also have this, which is also a number eight bar. Because it's bending in both ways, right? So the question is, is our D assumption correct? Remember at the beginning I said that um, I thought it was a little off, right? So what is it from here to the top is the question. Okay. What is that? Well, it's, so it D is equal to 24 inches minus clear minus the diameter of a number 8 bar, which magically comes out to be 1 inch. Right, so you clear that one inch, and then you're half of that, so minus 0 0.5. So what does that equal, right? 24 It's 19.5. So since 19.5 is more than your 19, uh, which is greater to 19, therefore everything's okay. Um, if you know this was off, you have you may have to go back to your calculator, redo everything. Um, if your numbers were really close, but if not, then you would say, you know what, it's not, it's it's, it's fine, and you'd be okay. So, and if you did that, then you could put something like say okay on your calcs, right? Okay, um, and that's how you would um, solve for it. The um, the other thing is that. I like to just really quickly add the, the difference is that if you had like a, a wall footing, a wall footing means that it's just smaller because it's, you know, it's a continuous wall. Right. Um, the uh, main difference is that you, when you solve for this, that rebar, it's one thing. But the one that's in and out, because it's really not doing anything, um, unless the code is saying uh, the minimum reinforcement is 0 0.0018 BD, um, it's somewhere in there. So you would check to see what the other the reinforcement in the other direction is. Um, again, we're not really going over that, but I just wanted to kind of say that that's also the other min that you'd want to check against if you had like a wall footing instead. Okay, and that's for uh, it's for temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. Okay, and so that concludes the uh, foundation design um, for uh, for this. Yeah, um, feel free to watch, and if you have some questions outside or within this, please um, you know uh, email me or ask at the next um, lecture. All right, have a good one, guys. Talk to you later.